Hello everyone. Now we'll see management of some most common malocclusions, uh, which we usually come across in our clinical practice. First is midline diastema. What exactly this midline diastema means? It is actually nothing but spacing present between two central incisors. Whenever the spacing between two central incisors is present, it is nothing but called as midline diastema. What are the various causes for the occurrence of this midline diastema? First, most commonly, it occurs because of transient malocclusion, that is self-correcting malocclusion. We usually see during the deciduous dentition, generally spacing is present in the deciduous dentition. This is nothing but a positive sign. Because permanent dentition teeth diameter is usually more larger when compared to deciduous teeth diameter. So physiological spacing is considered to be as good to be present. Another thing is during the agreed duckling stage. During the mixed dentition period, there occurs a stage between 9 to 11 years of age called as ugly duckling stage. During this stage also, usually midline testing or the midline spacing is seen, but it is also self-correcting as the age advances and canines totally erupt into the oral cavity. This space automatically gets closest. Second is because of arch length tooth size discrepancy. Midline diastema can also occur under situations wherein arch length is more and tooth size is less. Third is because of a thick labial frenum. This is considered as quite common uh, reason for the occurrence of midline diastema. This actually thick labial frenum, in this also we can see in this diagram, because of a thick labial frenum there is a presence of spacing between two central incisors. Normally the position of this labial frenum usually gets migrate apically as the teeth erupt. But in certain patients it persists and prevent the union of two central incisors and uh, there exists a thick band in between them this prevent uh, both the incisors from approaching or uh, approaching towards each other and there exists, exists a space in between them another reason for the occurrence of midline diastema is mm, those patients who are indulged in abnormal pressure habits like thumb sucking tongue thrusting etc and another most common is it is mostly seen in races negroid races midline diastema occurrence is more commonly seen when compared to other type of races what is the diagnosis? With simple clinical examination itself, we can notice the presence of midline diastema. Apart from this, we have to take impressions, study models. If we want to take, we can take even intraoral periapical radiograph and you can see the presence of thick labial frenum and even presence of spacing. Apart from this, one of the most commonly used tests to diagnose midline diastema is Blanche test. Blanche test is whenever the upper lip is pulled, because of the stretching of the upper lip, Blanching of the tissue in incisive papillary region can be seen. This confirms that thick labial freedom is present. What is the treatment? First is removal of the cause. As I have already said that if midline diastema is occurring because of thick labial freedom, then this thick labial freedom has to be incised. Phrenectomy or phrenotomy based upon the requirement has to be done. If it is occurring because of some abnormal habit like thumb sucking, tongue thrusting, it has to be intercepted. Third is active treatment. And fourth is retention. The last is retention. Second, active treatment. Active treatment can be done by using removal appliances or fixed appliances. Removal appliances most commonly used are finger springs. The finger springs can be, uh, can be incorporated in the removal hollies appliance etc. and it can be given. With the continuous action of this removal appliance, the space in between the two central incisors can be closed. Or another most common thing or various types of elastics can also be used in removal appliance. But fixed appliances are seems to be more effective when compared to removal appliances. Fixed appliance we can use along with fixed appliance e thread or e chain or tight ligature wax. These will help to close this midline diastema. Next is role of cosmetic restorations. When the uh, in cases where uh, occurrence of these spacing and midline diastema is occurring because of abnormal shape of the tooth itself, because abnormal shape of the crown, then instead of doing all these measures, it is better to replace the tooth or to modify it by giving cosmetic restorations and prosthetic crowns. Final retention. After correction of midline diastema, this midline diastema usually seems to recur or relapse very frequently. So it has to be given permanent retention by giving lingual bonded retainer to prevent the occurrence of relapse. Here we can see in these diagrams how e chains and the e threads are tied. Here ligature wires are uh, tied so as to bring the teeth close to each other and close this midline diastema. Next is management of spacing. What exactly spacing is also one of the most common manifestation of class 1 malocclusion. If you see etiology of spacing, we usually see spacing is also present in the form of transient malocclusion in deciduous dentition. Deciduous dentition is characterized by the presence of physiological spacing. This presence of physiological spacing is considered as a positive sign for proper eruption of the permanent teeth. So 
when it is present in deciduous teeth it usually gets corrected as the permanent teeth collapse but sometimes spacing is also present because of the indulgence of the patient in some abnormal habits like thumb sucking habit tongue thrusting habit mouth breathing habit in this thumb sucking and tongue thrusting habit the, because the child places the thumb anteriorly and this anterior segment of the maxilla gets prognathic and the teeth usually gets flared up similarly happens in tongue thrusting habit also when the tongue continuously thrusts anteriorly and pushes the teeth anteriorly and they usually get flared up apart from this spacing can also occur because of arch length tooth size discrepancy that means arch length is more but tooth size is less it will result in the occurrence of spacing one more most common is because of non eruption or delayed eruption of the permanent teeth under such circumstances also deciduous teeth will shut off at the proper time but permanent teeth will not erupt so this will result in the occurrence of spacing diagnosis by taking by doing a uh, routine clinical checkup by taking study models taking cephalograms by observing uh, intra oral periapical radiographs or by taking opg we can come to a diagnosis what is the treatment it also consists of removal of the cause first if this spacing is occurring because of presence of some abnormal habit like thumb sucking tongue thrusting habit the habit has to be intercepted to prevent the occurrence of that to prevent the further occurrence of relapse next is removal and fixed appliances removal appliances in the form of bows can be used by compressing the loops of the bows the teeth can be um, brought close to each other or we can even use retractors etc to bring teeth close to each other but can be best treated by using fixed appliances fixed appliances here in this diagram you can see how the brackets are placed in the oral cavity and then uh, brackets are placed onto the teeth after this wires are inserted and by using various types of e thread e chains ligature wires these spaces can be closed finally use of crowns and prosthesis under those circumstances as i have already mentioned in case of midline diastema that spacing is occurring because of abnormal shape or form of the teeth it is better to replace the teeth by giving prosthetic crowns or by doing cosmetic restorations <clears throat> next is management of crowding crowding is also a common manifestation of class 1 malocclusion what is the etiology of crowding crowding can also occur because of arch length tooth size discrepancy like arch length is less but tooth size is more it will result in occurrence of crowding in the teeth apart from this it also occur because of indulgence in habits like thumb sucking habit tongue thrusting habit mouth breathing habit also result in abnormal movement of the teeth another most common thing we have to remember in crowding is late labial segment crowding late lower labial segment crowding that means usually in the mid teens or late teens we usually see crowding occurring like this at a lower anterior segment there are a number of reasons which are considered to be responsible for this late lower labial segment crowding particularly in this teenage it can occur because of late mandibular growth even after the completion of the maxillary growth mandible continues to grow in forward direction this will creates an obstruction within the between the mandible and the maxilla and this will result in occurrence of this anterior crowding apart from this it can also occur because of periosteal pull because of gingival pull of gingival fibers it may cause the mandibular posteriors to move anteriorly and this will cause again occurring occurrence of this crowding in the anterior another is because of decrease in intercanine width as the age advances there is decrease in intercanine width during the teen age when this intercanine width decreases crowding of the anterior teeth occurs and one more most common thing which can be considered is roll of third molars as the third molar starts getting erupted it will create some mesial force on all the mandibular posteriors and these posteriors will also push the anteriors and anteriors will get crowded diagnosis as i have already said that to come to any diagnosis we have to first do clinical examination study model evaluation and we can see take an opg and evaluate what is the treatment treatment is for the crowding first we have to check gaining of space we have to first gain space we have to do complete model analysis and we have to determine how the space can be gained to bring the teeth into the arch this gaining of the space can be done by various methods if it is very minor space requirement then simply by doing little proximal stripping we can achieve space apart from this with the help of nickel titanium bars as the arch expands also little amount of space can be achieved another can be if we want to achieve more amount of space we have to go for extractions little amount of space gaining we can go for a single lower incisor extraction if more amount of space is required we can go for premolars extraction if we don't want to do extraction and based upon the case requirement we can even do distalization of molars to achieve space next is use of removable appliances and use of fixed appliances to correct crowding various type of removable appliances can be used in the form of retractors in the form of labial bows 
but however they are more time consuming and depends upon patient's cooperation. So we can use fixed appliances. Fixed appliances brackets can be bonded onto the teeth and various types of nickel titanium archways ranging from smaller diameter to larger diameter have to be used. These are more elastic in nature. They have more shape level super elasticity uh, as they can be these nickel titanium wires can be adapted in heavily crowded teeth also. As they try to regain their original shape they usually cause relief of crowding and proper alignment of the teeth. Here in this diagram we can see how its nickel titanium archway is adapted onto the crowded teeth. Next is management of class 2 malar corrosion. According to Angle, class 2 malar corrosion is the condition wherein the distobuccal cusp of the maxillary molar occludes the buccal groove of the mandibular molar. What is then class? This class 2 malar corrosion is divided again into two categories class 2 division 1 and class 2 division 2. What is class 2 division 1? Class 2 division 1 malar corrosion is characterized by class 2 molar relationship and Severe anterior proclination of the maxillary teeth. Class 2 division 2 is class 2 molar relationship is present, but two central incisors, maxillary central incisors are retroclined and the later incisors are proclined. This is class 2 division 2. Now we will see in detail about class 2 division 1 molar occlusion. What are the dental features? Here in this diagram we can see that the molar relationship will be either class 2 molar relationship or it will be endon molar relationship. There will be severe proclination of the maxillary anterior teeth. Since the maxillary anterior teeth are severely proclined, the upper lip and the lower lip will not come in contact. That means there will be clear separation of the upper and lower lip will be present and patient will not have proper lip seal. And since the upper anterior are proclined, the lower teeth are free to erupt. They usually uh, erupt and this causes an exaggeration of the curve of speed. What are the skeletal features which are usually seen in these patients? They can have maxillary prognathism, mandibular retrognathism, or a combination of maxillary prognathism and retrognathism. What can be the etiology for the occurrence of this class 2 division 1 malocclusion? It can be prenatal factors, natal factors or postnatal factors. What could be prenatal factors? Prenatal factors can be excessive intrauterine pressure during the time of pregnancy, severe teratogenes, uh, that is consumption of certain contraindicated drugs by the mother like uh, methotrexate or occurrence of certain other diseases in the mother during the time of pregnancy can be responsible. Then what can be natal factors? Natal factors can be abnormal forceps delivery. That, that during the time of delivery, abnormal application of the pressure through forceps can be responsible for the occurrence of these class 2 division 1 malocclusions. And postnatal factors can be indulgence of the patient in abnormal habits like thumb sucking habit, thumb thrusting habit, mouth breathing habit or rheumatoid arthritis or this can be considered as the postnatal factors. After knowing about the etiology and all, let us know how to treat this class 2 division 1 malocclusion. There are three um, modes of treatment, growth modification, camouflage and surgical correction. First coming to growth modification. Growth modification is usually done during the growth period that is before the cessation of the growth in patients. Now this before attempting this growth modification, first dental cephalogram has to be taken and we have to first evaluate which jaw is at fault. Whether there is fault in the maxilla, whether there is fault in the mandible or both maxilla and mandible is at fault. If we see that there is mandibular deficiency, then this can be corrected by giving appliances like activator. This activator or functional regulator FR2 or bionator, these malfunctional appliances will help to advance the mandible. If we see that no, mandible is normal, but it is occurring because of deficient because of over growth of the maxilla. Then we have to restrict the growth of the maxilla by using various types of headgears. Headgears can be occipital headgear, cervical headgear, or combination headgear. If we see this occurring because of both problem in maxilla as well as mandible, that means decreased growth of the mandible and excessive growth of the maxilla, then we have to do give combination of headgears with activator or with twin block. What is camouflage? Camouflage is nothing but masking or shielding the overlying skeletal deformity by doing teeth movement. Like if we cannot correct the skeletal uh, deformity, then we can, um, uh, we can mask the skeletal deformity by doing certain dental changes. In camouflage, as I have said that class 2 division 1 malocclusion is characterized by class 2 molar relationship and severe anterior proclination. If the molar relationship is perfect class 2, then we can end the case with class 2 molar relationship only. Simply we can do extraction of upper 
force that is first premolars and upper arch and we can retract the upper antibus. This will improve the profile of the patient. If on the other hand we want to improve the proclination is less, then we have we can do extraction of lower second premolars and upper first premolars. By doing extraction of lower second premolars, we can mesialize the lower molars and we can get perfect class 1 molar relationship. And as we have done extraction of upper first premolars, we can cause we can do retraction of upper anteriors and we can improve the profile. So here we are not doing any skeletal changes. By doing teeth movement, we are trying to mask the overlying skeletal deformity. This is nothing but called as camouflage. Next is surgical correction. If the patient has crossed the age of growth modification at all, the next thing is to do surgical correction and improve the profile of the patient. We have to first evaluate which jaw is at fault. If it is mandible, we have to do mandibular advancement. If it is maxilla, then we have to do maxillary setback. And in some cases, by jaw surgery is also required wherein both jaws are at problem. This was all about management of class 2 malocclusion. No, for class 2 division 1 malocclusion. Next is class 2 division 2. As I have said that class 2 division 2 malocclusion is characterized by presence of class 2 molar relationship and upper central incisors will be retroclined and laterals will be proclined. These patients usually have complete deep bite and since, since the upper centrals are retroclined, they usually cause impingement of the labial uh, gingiva of the lower teeth. Hence, we have to first relieve the deep bite. We have to correct the retro retroclined upper anteriors. This can be done by using various type of appliances. Simple incorporation of zit sprays in the removal appliance can also be used to properly procline the upper centrals or functional appliances like has have orders that an activator or functional regulator can be used. This was all about management of class 2 malocclusion. Let us now enter into class 3 malocclusion. Class 3 malocclusion on the other side is a condition wherein the mesobuccal cusp of the maxillary molar occlude between the mandibular first and second molars. Class 3 malocclusion also have dental features and skeletal features. When we look on the dental features, it is characterized by the presence of class 3 molar relationship. It is characterized by severe, either the anteriors will be edge to edge or negative overjet will be present. That means the lower anteriors will be ahead of upper anterior. This is called as negative overjet. Apart from that, in case of severe negative overjet, as a natural compensation, we can see a little bit retroclination of lower anteriors and a little bit proclination of the upper anterior. This is nothing but natural compensation to mask the skeletal deformity. Apart from this, these patients usually have more wider mandible and more narrower maxilla. What are the skeletal features of these class 3 malocclusion? Class 3 malocclusion patients are characterized by prognathic mandible, retrognathic maxilla or a combination of prognathic mandible and retrognathic maxilla. Another most commonly seen uh, feature of class 3 is pseudo class 3 case. Pseudo class 3 malocclusion is a condition wherein because of the presence of certain occlusal deformities, the patient usually tries to close the mouth or try to close the mouth in an altered fashion. Because of this alteration, usually the patient develops class 3 malocclusion. This is called a pseudo class 3. Actually, exactly the skeletal deformity is not present, but because of presence of occlusal deformities, there is alteration in the growth of the jaw. Next, coming to etiology. As I've already said that it can be hereditary, like Habsburg jaw we have seen. There is hereditary which is commonly seen running in the family. Or certain, sec second most common is pseudo class 3, that is because of the presence of occlusal deformities also, there can be alteration in the growth of the mandible. What is the diagnosis? Diagnosis, routine clinical examination, taking uh, impressions, then pouring study models and observing study models from three planes of space, taking OPG, taking lateral cephalogram and evaluation of the case. Next is treatment. Treatment of this class 3 malocclusion also can be done in following steps. First is interception during growth. Class 3 malocclusion should be intercepted as soon as it is recognized. Because this malocclusion, if it is not corrected at an early age, it will become further more worse and severe as the age advances. So as soon as it is diagnosed, it can be intercepted by giving myofunctional appliances like FR3 can be given to restrict the growth of the mandible. Again, we have to take lateral cephalogram and evaluate which jaw is at fault. If it is mandible, then the restriction of the mandibular growth can be uh, restriction of the mandibular growth can be done by giving chin cup or we can by by giving chin cup appliance therapy we can restrict the further growth of the mandible. Or if we uh, if we see that it is a because of mandible, we can give FR3 appliance. FR3 appliance will prevent for the further growth of the mandible and it will enhance the growth of the maxilla. This is nothing but face mask therapy. 
This is usually given under the circumstances when there is both retrusion of the macula and prognathism of the mandible. This face mask therapy acts in such a way that it consists of an intraoral splint which is present in the maxilla and with the help of the elastics it continuously tries to protract the maxilla forward. And while doing so, it protracts the maxilla and it takes anchorage from forehead and chin cap. By, while taking anchorage from the chin cap, it also exerts a distal force on the mandible. So face mask therapy, we can distalize the mandible or retrude the mandible and protract the maxilla. Now since I have said that class 3 malocclusion is characterized by the presence of anterior crossbite, uh, since negative overjet is present, this can be treated by using first is the face mask therapy which will help to protract the macula. Apart from this, intraoral splints consisting of screws which are uh, placed at the anterior region also helps to protract the maxilla and it will help to correct the anterior crossbite. If posterior crossbite is also present because of narrow maxilla, as I have already said that these patients usually have more wider mandible when compared to the maxilla, we can incorporate RME, it is rapid maxillary expansion so as to expand the maxillary arch. So this was all about management of class 3 malocclusion. Next, let us know how to manage an open bite case. Before going into detail of this, let us first know what exactly open bite means. Open bite is a condition wherein there is lack of overlap between upper, vertical overlap between upper and lower arches. That means there is no overlap. Normally, there should be proper overbite between upper and lower teeth. But in these conditions, there will be no vertical overlap between upper and lower teeth. This is the condition where we can see there is no overlap between upper and lower anterior teeth. Now this open bite can be anterior open bite or posterior open bite. What is the common etiology of anterior open bite? Anterior open bite mostly occur because in those patients who are indulged in abnormal habits like thumb sucking habit, tongue thrusting habit, mouth breathing habit. In those patients who are indulged in thumb sucking and tongue thrusting hab thumb sucking habit, because of continuous sucking of the thumb, it usually causes proclination of upper anteriors and retroclination of lower anteriors because of which open bite occur. In case of tongue thrust habit patients also, because of continuous thrusting of the tongue between the upper and the lower teeth, it usually causes proclination of the upper teeth. So this is the one of the most common etiology of open bite which is seen. The open bite can be skeletal open bite, can be dental open bite. What are the features of skeletal open bite? Whenever skeletal open bite is seen, usually the skeletal bases are at, at fault. These patients are usually characterized by decreased upper anterior facial height, increased lower anterior facial height, downward and backward rotation of the mandible. They are mostly considered as long face syndrome patients. There is no vertical overlap between the arches. Lips are, lips are also incompetent. What are the dental features of the open bite? In case of dental open bite, we usually see that there is no overlap between upper and the lower teeth. Upper anteriors will be severely proclined in certain, certain circumstances wherein the child is involved in thumb sucking habit. Apart from upper anterior proclination, there will be even retroclination of the lower anteriors. Upper jaw will be more narrow because of continuous pressure, negative pressure acting because of sucking of the thumb. And lower arch will be more wider when compared to the upper arch. Hence, presence of cross bites will be there. This is the diagrams of the pictures which indicates open bite, anterior open bite. Now what is the treatment of anterior open bite? First is the removal of cause. If we see that this open bite has occurred because of presence of certain habits like thumb sucking habit, tongue thrusting habit, then that habit has to be intercepted. If the habit is not intercepted and if the treatment is done, then again relapse of this malocclusion will occur. So the habit has to be intercepted. Interception can be done by the use of various habit breakers. It can be in the form of tongue grip, which usually help to prevent the thrusting of the tongue anteriorly. And also it helps to remind the patients who usually have thumb sucking habit. That means it acts as a habit reminder also. Next is myofunctional therapy. For the treatment of this open bite, we can use modifications of activator or FR4 can also be used. Functional regulator 4 can be used for the treatment of open bite case. Another is orthodontic therapy. Orthodontic therapy using fixed appliances and anterior box elastics can be used to close this anterior opening. Next is posterior open bite. Another condition is occurrence of open bite in the posterior region. Mostly posterior open bite occur because of lateral tongue thrust habit. The patients usually have usually these patients have usually lateral thrusting of the tongue in a lateral direction. Apart from this, everything will be normal, but sometimes the teeth won't erupt. The posterior teeth, because of presence of certain uh, interruption, doesn't erupt properly. Sometimes ankylos posterior teeth may be present. 
So first we have to find out the exact cause or the etiology of the posterior open bite and we have to correct it. If it is because of lateral tongue thrust habit, lateral tongue spikes can be incorporated and the habit can be intercepted. Sometimes it can occur because of macroglossia. Hence partial glossectomy also may be required under certain circumstances. So this is the treatment of the posterior open bite. Under circumstances where there are ankylosed teeth are present, then instead of going for all these modalities, we can simply go for replacement with prosthetic crowns or uh, composite uh, modifications can be done so as to replace the proper form of the teeth. This was all about open bite. Now, exactly opposite to this is a deep bite. What exactly deep bite? Deep bite is nothing but excessive overlap, with vertical overlap between upper and lower teeth. Here in this figure we can see there is excessive overlap, vertical overlap between upper and lower teeth. This is also called as traumatic deep bite. Now deep bite can also be skeletal deep bite or dental deep bite. Skeletal deep bite is a condition wherein there is wherein there is abnormality in the uh, skeletal basis. This usually characterized by downward rotation of the maxilla and upward rotation of the mandible. When this rotations of the maxilla is present, it is downward and backward rotation of maxilla and upward and anterior rotation of the mandible. The deep bite is further considered to be as more complicated. Dental deep bite. Here the jaws will be normal and only there will be problem with the teeth. But dental deep bite can occur because of two reasons. It can occur because of supra eruption or over eruption of anteriors or because of under eruption or intrusion of the posteriors. If there is intrusion of the posteriors also deep bite can occur. If there is excessive uh, eruption of the anteriors also deep bite can occur. There are certain factors that has to be considered while planning for the treatment of deep bite. First is lip relationship. What does this lip relationship mean? If there is excessive gingival exposure uh, of the patient during this time of smile, that means if there is gummy smile present, then usually for these patients, we usually do intrusion of the anteriors rather than causing extrusion of the molars. If you do intrusion of the anteriors to correct the deep bite, mostly the appearance of the patient will improve. But if the lip relationship is normal, that means there is normal gingival exposure during the smile, which is normally 2 to 3 mm, we can consider that. Incisors have erupted normally. There is some fault with the molars. Hence, in these circumstances, we will do extrusion of the posteriors. Second factor is consider a vertical facial relationship. Whenever we usually try to correct the deep bite, what exactly happens is uh, in these uh, what uh, whenever we try to correct the deep bite by giving anterior bite pain, etc., it will cause further eruption of the posteriors and sometimes even downward and backward rotation of the mandible. Hence, proper vertical relationship of the mandible has to be taken into consideration. If already there is down, uh, rotation of the mandible is present, then further extrusion of the posteriors have, this should not be done because it will further deteriorate the condition. Next is consideration of interocclusal space. The normal interocclusal space at the area of premolars is 2 to 3 mm. If there is inter increased interocclusal space, that means more than 2 to 3 mm, then this means that the molars or the posteriors have not erupted fully and here in these conditions we should do more eruption or extrusion of the posteriors so as to correct the deep bite. Now correction of deep bite. Simple removal appliances can be used. Most common removal appliance is the use of anterior bite plane. Whenever anterior bite plane is given, when the lower arch comes in contact with, the, with this bite plate, the posterior doesn't come in contact. Now these posteriors are free to erupt, they erupt and they correct the anterior deep bite. Myofunctional appliances, various modifications in the activator can be done to, supra, uh, to cause eruption of the posteriors or intrusion of the anteriors. Another thing is used of fixed appliances. Next is fixed appliance therapy. In fixed appliance therapy, we usually do bonding of the teeth followed by leveling and alignment and then when we enter into rigid wire phase, we can incorporate anchor edge bends. These anchor bends are actually given mesial to the molar. When anchor bend is given mesial to the molar, the anterior aspect of the wire usually is present more gingival when compared to the posterior aspect. Here we can see in the figure. So when this wire is forcefully inserted into the bracket, it will create an intrusive force in the anteriors. Apart from this, use of arch wires with reverse curve of speed. And next is utility arches. Utility arches also is constructed in such a way then when the anterior portion of the arch is inserted into the bracket, anterior bracket, it will cause intrusion of the anteriors and it will cause extrusion of the posteriors. Next coming to management of cross bite. What exactly is cross bite? Cross bite is nothing but actually an abnormal transverse relationship between upper and lower teeth. Normally, 
the buccal the buccal cusps of the mandibular uh, posteriors occludes in the central fossa of the maxillary posteriors when this uh, relationship is altered it is nothing but results in the occurrence of cross bites classification of cross bite cross bite can be classified based upon the location based on the nature based on the location it can be anterior cross bite or posterior cross bite anterior cross bite can be single tooth cross bite or multiple tooth cross bite posterior cross bite can be unilateral cross bite or bilateral cross bite based on the nature it can be dental cross bite skeletal cross bite or functional cross bite dental cross bite is a condition where in one or more teeth will be in an abnormal negative relation negative over jet relationship skeletal cross bite is a condition where in because of lack of growth of the jaw braces or because of excessive growth of the jaw braces there is abnormal transverse relationship between the jaws and the last is based on the func functional cross bite is a condition wherein because of occlusal uh, discrepancy or occlusal prematurities the position of the jaw is altered and it results in the development of cross bite here in the first figure we can see single tooth cross bite is present in second figure we can see anti in first figure anterior cross bite in second figure single tooth posterior cross bite can be seen Apart from these cross bites, there are another two conditions called as buccal non occlusion and lingual non occlusion. What is buccal non occlusion? Normally, as I have already said, that normal transverse relationship is mandibular um, buccal cusps of the mandibular posteriors occludes in the central fossa of the maxillary posteriors. But if the maxillary posteriors are present totally buccal when compared to the mandibular posteriors, it is called as buccal non occlusion or scissor bite. Then what is lingual non occlusion? If the maxillary posteriors are present completely in total lingual relationship in that of the maxilla it is called as lingual non occlusion what is the etiology of cross bite one of the most common seen uh, anterior cross bite is seen in case of class 3 non occlusion hence we can see it hereditary is the one of the most common etiological factor apart from this cross bites can also occur because of presence of certain abnormal habits also third it can also be seen because of the presence of certain uh, interferences like because of presence of certain deciduous uh, root fragments uh, if the deciduous root doesn't shed off and if it is still present it will usually cause deflection of the permanent coming successors hence this permanent coming teeth usually get deflected and they develop in an abnormal relationship this is another most common uh, hence cross bites usually occur because of uh, presence of over retained deciduous tooth also because of early shed of deciduous teeth also how to treat these cross bites Simple dental cross bites can be treated during the growth period by the use of tongue blade. Tongue blade is nothing but similar to some ice cream sticks. Usually, orthodontists advise these patients to use tongue blades during the daytime continuously. As the child tries to keep this tongue blade, it creates a force. The, if you can see in the figure how the tongue blade is placed in the oral cavity, uh, when it is placed and on the anterior teeth, it will create a it will pull, push the teeth from parietal aspect anteriorly, and it also tries to create a force on the lingual uh, on the lower teeth also hence uh, upper teeth moves in a buccal direction and lower teeth moves in a lingual direction next is catalan appliance what is catalan appliance catalan appliance is nothing but lower anti lower anterior inclined plate it is prepared in such a way that when the child or when the patient try closes the mouth the inclined plane pushes the uh, maxillary teeth from parietal aspect and moves them buccally here we can see the inclined plane is done in such a way it will exert a force from the parietal aspect on the maxillary anterior teeth and it will push them buccally. Use of double cantilever springs or Z springs. These Z springs also help to exert force and move the teeth in a parietal direction. Sorry, in bucket, in case of retrocline maxillary anteriors, they help to procline the maxillary anteriors. Next is treatment of skeletal anterior open bite. As I have said that one of the most common method of treatment of skeletal anterior open bite during the growth period is use of face mask. This face mask with the help of intraoral elastics helps to continuously protract the maxilla and with the help of chin cup it also helps to re, uh, usually creates a, uh, a retrusive force on the mandible. Hence maxilla is protracted, mandible is retruded. This will help in correction of this cross bite. What is posterior cross bite then? Sometimes instead of the cross bite pre present anteriorly because of uh, abnormal development of the jaws because of hypoplastic unilateral hypoplastic jaw etc the um, cross bite is even seen in the posterior aspect if this cross bite is a single tooth cross bite like that or 
uh, more than one or two teeth cross bite, they can simply be corrected by using posterior cross bite elastics. Cross, uh, the, it, it is, the cross bite elastic is engaged in such a way that it engages the lingual aspect of one teeth and buccal aspect of another teeth. In this way, the teeth usually gets corrected to the normal relationship. Another is use of coffin spray. It is also one of the removable appliance. This consists of uh, omega shaped uh, thick gauge wire. Activation is done by pulling the arms of this spring apart and forcefully placing the appliance in the oral cavity. It will bring about slowly dental alveolar expansion and will help the correction of posterior cross bite. Another is rapid maxillary expansion. This rapid maxillary expansion consists of an acrylic plate and consists of a screw at the midline area. This screw is activated timely and as the screw is activated, it will slowly cause mental alveolar expansion. Last is the use of fixed appliance. Simply with the help of thicker gauge wires also we can achieve expansion. Before uh, inserting the wire into the oral cavity, it has to be expanded how much amount of expansion is required and then the wire is inserted in, into the brackets. It will also bring about slow amount of expansion. This was all about treatment of cross bites. Thank you.